Joaquin Thompson, senior, the host of the Daily Bread Radio Show. And the Daily Bread Radio Show, for all of you all that are joining for the first time, the Daily Bread Radio Show is a show about personal finance. Some people call it financial literacy. We talk about topics related to personal finance. And you may be asking yourself, what topics? All topics. Everything is related. Hey, man, I gotta take that outside. I think we're talking on the show. Fix my thing. Man, you got this old... Man, go ahead with that, man. Man, uh, air, air well ahead, sucked, man. though, man. Want a humbucker? Want a humbucker? Man, where's the Wi-Fi in this place, man? It's 2019. But anyway, mm -hmm. the Underground Radio Show is a show about personal finance, and we talk about all things related to personal finance. And you may be asking yourself, well, what's related to personal finance? Everything. Everything. I challenge you to think of one thing that's not related to personal finance. And if you want me to wait, I'll wait. Everything is related to personal finance, from where you live, where you shop, the food that you eat, your diet, your education, the car you drive, your relationship, your legacy, from birth to transition. And everything in between is related to personal finance. So what we try to do is, you know, we have a motto on our show, and our show's motto is to educate by providing information on different topics. With the education, our hope is that you would be motivated, motivated to take action, motivated to change, motivated to step into a different reality. And then after you're motivated, that's gonna help you to elevate. Meaning, a lot of times people, people now, the word now is level up. Now people saying level up. People used to say going to the next level. So we talk about that, so it's educate, motivate, elevate. 
educate, motivate, elevate. Tonight is a milestone. I know I came on pretty animated, but I mean, I was just so excited on my way out here tonight because tonight is episode, this tonight is episode 90, nine zero. So the thing is so phenomenal about it being episode 90 is that I think back to the first, the very first episode that we did on the show, and it's, I mean, we, we're light years away from that. I mean, we're just so far away from that on our journey to where we're headed. It's just, it, it's phenomenal from that standpoint. So tonight, we're in episode, episode 90. We only got 10 episodes. I remember we was on episode 10. We only got 10 episodes left before we hit 100. So um, I'm super excited about that. Got some great topics for tonight. It's been a great week. It's been a great two weeks. Before I get into tonight's show, I do have to give you one last ground rule, which is this. The Daily Bread Radio Show is a show about personal finance from a spiritual perspective, but we do not do religion, meaning... If you want to talk religion, if you say, I believe because I'm Muslim, I believe because I'm Baptist, I believe, and it, it, they, our doctrine says, and I'm, you know, whatever your religion or your religious preference is, we don't talk that on the Daily Bread Radio Show. You're welcome to call into the show with a comment, a question, or something that you want to get some clarification on. The number to the station is 678 385 19, 678-381-1973. 678-381-1973. 678-381-1973. So you could call in to, like I said, tonight is a historic night, episode 90. Um, and really when I started out, I, I really could not, I couldn't even see this far. I couldn't even see 90 episodes into the future. I could only see one, two, three, four, five. And then got into like the teens, like I can see episode 15, 16, then we got into the 30s. Then I remember the 50th episode, I remember when we did the 50th episode, that was huge. I remember that, that was right before we did the Famous Amos episode. And then since then, we've done another 50 almost. We've done another 40 episodes, so we're in episode 90. I uh, want to say good evening to my wife. I see she logged in, Tanya Thompson, loving my life. 28 years strong, you know, creating big things, you know, great kids, great life, great wife. So um, I see she's joining the show. And, and tonight, I just wanted to kind of take a step back. One thing I definitely, I want to go back and reiterate with the listening audience is this. I know it's Valentine's Day and happy Valentine's Day to everyone that's watching the show live and everyone that's going to go back and look at the show as a, like a re- View of the show or a replay. I guess that would be a, a, a better description. A replay of the show. Happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully you're out with your Valentine. Hopefully, you know, your hearts are aligned and hopefully, you know, your relationship has some staying power because we know it's not going to, every day is not going to be Valentine's Day. So what you're going to need, and this is coming from someone who's been married as long as I have been, you're going to need some days when it's not Valentine's Day. You're going to need some staying power. So hopefully, you know, you can celebrate everything tonight. Everything is going your way. And um, then you'll be prepared to have some longevity in your relationship so you can experience some things that only a very few people in life are able to experience. And that's one of the topics that I'm going to speak on tonight. Every week I always have a I mean, I have so many different topics that I want to talk about, but like I said, everything is tied back into personal finance. So a couple of quick announcements, March the 7th, March the 7th, uh, submitted a proposal, proposal was approved. March the 7th, mark your calendars. We're gonna be at Morehouse College from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. doing our first seminar on financial literacy for active college students. And the reason I say active, because some college students have already graduated, they're new grads. We're going after the students that are still in college, freshmen, sophomores, juniors and seniors, 
and double seniors, because you know we got some double seniors too. Not that they're in a five-year program, but they just double seniors. They, this is their second senior season. But what our goal is to go to Morehouse College on March the 7th and really just enlighten these young men about the importance of having a working knowledge about personal finance. Because regardless of what your degree is in, regardless of your major, right? Psychology, history, math, you know, somebody might be in philosophy, some people want to be engineers, some people want to be math majors, science majors, physics majors, microbiology, communications, business, marketing, accounting, whatever your major is, you still gonna have to deal with personal finance. You still have to deal with personal finance. So we're gonna have the opportunity to go over to Morehouse College, March the 7th, and, and provide a seminar that will hopefully help some of these young men to just not to stay woke, as people say now, but it's gonna give them the opportunity in order for them to wake up. Because right now, the way our educational system is set up, it's set up for us to have our students to literally fall asleep. Because we're still working from, we're working from a, a program where it's from an industrial standpoint. And we've gone into, this is the 21st century. People are doing stuff digitally, globally. The competition is, is more fierce than ever. So you're gonna need to know how to compete at that level, especially when it comes to managing money. Because if you don't know how to manage money, if you don't understand the importance of knowing how to manage money, then whatever your degree is in, that's gonna be a, you're gonna have a liability because you don't have the education or you don't have the working knowledge of what you need to do in order to be successful managing money. Because the first thing they're gonna do, the first thing they teach college students is what? How to accumulate debt. Nobody has to teach you that. You just come out with it. Somebody just get, somebody just going to give that to you. So if you go to college, 80% of the people that go to college, you don't have to ask for debt. They're going to give you that. They're going to say, here, here's some debt for you, right? So once you take that on, now you got, you know, on average $37,000, $40,000 worth of debt. Some people are going to come out with fifty. dollars Some people are going to go to grad school. They're going to come out with, you know, seventy five. 80. So what my goal and my objective is when I go out to meet with these young men is to, again, teach them about the importance of personal finance. Like why you need to know personal finance. And I'm going to give, I only have an hour, so I'm going to give them some quick steps on things that they need to learn in order to be successful once they leave Morehouse College and embark upon their, you know, their new careers and their chosen field. So we're going to be doing that again, March 7th, 12 to 1 at Morehouse College. Um, tonight I want to talk, I have a couple topics that I want to talk about tonight. Um, and one of the topics is, I put it down, uh, I wrote it down earlier because I, I thought about it all the way out here and I was talking to my wife about it before I left home. So I'm a, I'll start off with that one and then we'll get into the other topics. Again, the, the number to the station, 678 381-1973, So the first topic I want to talk about is evolution. Evolution, and all of this ties back to personal finance, right? and, and I'll tie it back in, you know, for you. But with evolution, one of the examples that I always like to use is, you know, people that are great at what they do. And I'm a sports fanatic, so first thing that came to my mind was like Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant, um, Tom Brady, um, Vince Carter, Shaquille O'Neal, um, Tiger Woods, I mean, Bill Mickelson, I mean, I mean, just just on and on, right? People that are great at what they do, and not just in the sports arena, but then you have to, you know, when you start thinking about business-wise, you know, you got people like Puffy, you got people like, you know, Birdman for Cash Money, you got people like um, Jay Z, you know, Beyonce, um, Jay Prince, right? These are people that 
because the only way for you to reach greatness is through longevity. Right? You can't you can't be great in a short period of time, like two years. Like, oh, he's great. Two, not, the only person I've seen that is really hailed at that level of being great, which is you know Biggie and Tupac. They didn't have very long careers, but they were extremely popular, and they they made such a, a huge impact, and their footprint was so big in their given industry, in the music industry, that they moved into that, you know, upper echelon of being great. But from, you know, most times with greatness, you have to have longevity, right? Because you can't be, it, it's, it's like in the martial arts, right? You can't become a black belt in a short period of time. Greatness, like when you want to become the sensei, the master, takes time. And what happens with time is you have to evolve over time, right? So if you think about, and, and the, the reason I was thinking about it is because yesterday was my 52nd birthday. So um, definitely shout out to everybody on Facebook, everybody that sent me a text, call, posted something on Facebook. I tried my best to make sure I went back and responded individually to each one of those individuals. But if one of those people were you, special kudos to you for for just thinking of me on my birthday yesterday, 52 years young, right? I, I know I'm not, I don't look a day over 52. I get it. But again, evolution. So when you start thinking about how you're going to evolve, going back to Jordan, like when Jordan came to the league, Jordan used to be able to just, he could take off from the free throw. He could fly, right? But as time went on, what Jordan, what he figured out was this, you know what? He had that ankle injury that kept him out then he had a knee injury he couldn't fly like he used to fly when he got into year seven year eight year nine you know took off to go play baseball came back but what he had to do in his mind was take his game and evolve his game and come and make his game where his game would fit and still put him in a position to be dominant so he worked on his jumper he worked on his mid-range game. He worked on his free throw. He worked on his pivot move. He worked on his, you know, how he would back, you know, other guards down. He's like, I can't drive like I used to drive. But his game evolved. Same thing with Kobe Bryant. Same thing with Dr. J. Same thing with Akeem Olajuwon. Things, as you evolve, you have to develop certain skills that you weren't doing when you were younger in the game. Whatever the game is. So when you think about the game of life, at 52, I can't be still playing the same game I was doing when I was 22, 32, even at 42. My game has to evolve, right, in order for me to be dominant. So, man, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I was thinking about that coming in. And, and that's why I say evolution is so powerful because in the Bible, Right? Abraham. Wasn't Abraham like, what, 90 years old? 100 years old? Yeah. He, right? was very old. he was very old mm -hmm. before he even started to get blessed. So if you're 52, right? And this is what the evolution comes in. If you're 52 and you sitting at home or you looking at this broadcast or you hear about it or you do a rewind, if, if, if in your mind, for whatever reason, in your mind, you still are saying to yourself, man, I remember back in the day, I could do this, I could do that. Forget back in the day. Mm -hmm. Forget back in the day when you, you might have been the baddest dude on the block. You might have been the baddest chick on the block. You might have been able to break that. You might have been popular, this, that, and the other. That, that was 35 years ago. The thing that you got to do now is evolve. And at 52, you got to ask yourself, like, you know what? I got to create some new skills that's going to still help me to be dominant in whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. So maybe back in the day, you was, you know, like I see my man Prime on. Prime, I see you. Even, even at 52, my eyesight is still good enough. I can look out there. I see Prime. Prime was in the hundred, right? Prime was marching. Doo, doo, doo. He, was in the, he was in rebound band. Doo, 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 doo. But at 52, he can't go out there and do his got nerve. He can't do the same routine he did at BAM at 52. Why not? Right? He could do it, but he might pull a hamstring. or He ain't going to put the time in that he had to put in when he had to go to the patch. 
right? He, he's not going to put that type of time. But at 52, he can still take his mind and apply it to something and put the same time, effort, and energy into it. And guess what? Create whatever result he want to create. Could be a business, could be his relationship, it could be any whatever he decided he want to do. But all of that comes from evolution, right? Evolution. It's like I was talking to a gentleman yesterday from a business standpoint. He said, "Well," and we was talking about how a lot of people now want to, they really want to invest in cannabis, right? So yeah, you have all these companies now. Weed. Weed. Oh, weed is multi-billion. I mean, multi. Billion with a B, multi-billion dollar business, multi-billion dollar industry. So now land. people are wanting to invest in cannabis. Come I, got, I got a lot of land, man. You think people are breaking my house? Right. If you got a lot of land, you better be putting some weed on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, from an evolution standpoint, this is what we was talking about. Very, very few times in the history of the world, once you break a threshold, mm -hmm. Right? Once you've broken a threshold, very few people are going to want to revert back to the way things were before. That's right. To give you an example, right? Right now, I was looking at a computer, and we're still talking about evolution. I was looking at a computer the other day, and I'm in that. Now, this is going to, this is going to show you my age. Mm -hmm. I asked the guy, I'm looking all around the computer. I said, um... You ain't asked for a flop, flop drive. I said... I ain't say the floppy, but I said, where the disk drive? <laughs> I said, man, this I said, y'all don't have no uh y'all don't make a computer with a disk drive. And it was a young, it was a young kid, man, younger than my kids. He was looking at me. First thing, you know when you old when they stop, when they open up with this, sir. <laughs> he said, sir. <laughs> he said, and, and the young man was trying to be cool. He said, uh, he said, sir. What are you going to be using the computer for <laughs> that you're going to need a disk drive? <laughs> yeah, I go, I'm going to be writing papers. I'm going to be editing my videos. He's uh, you're not going to need a disk drive for that. Mm -mm. So basically what he's saying is we've broken through a threshold where we're not going back to use a disk. That's obsolete. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same way when we went from 8-track to cassette. Yep. From cassette to disc, mm -hmm. and now we're going from disc to digital. Mm -hmm. So if you see in these evolutions in your life, time, most of the people that are on the broadcast, they, they can remember being in a car with an eight track, mm -hmm. with an eight track. And then you remember having a car with a cassette deck yep. in the car, a cassette, like, what? Mm -hmm. So if you can remember all of that, and now you at the age that you are now, and you still are trying to do and live the way you was doing when the eight track was out, when the cassette was out, and even now with the disc, we have to evolve. We have to evolve. And all those things that were not before, they can be that now. And we was joking before I came on the air, it was like, I got a saying that I say, which is some people, some listen to this, some people dream about it. Some people be about it. Come on. Right? Some people dream about it. I wish, I wish, I can't, I can't imagine. Just listen to the, the words that people say, and that'll give you some insight to the way that they think about things. Mm -hmm. I wish, I hope, I, 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 pray. I, can't, I pray, I can't see it. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Some people dream about it. Some people be about it. Yep. Some people don't say it won't. Some people say, how can I do it? Mm -hmm. How can I do it? How can I make this happen? When this happens, right? So it's, it's just all about you being able to take your life. And then when you may be asking yourself out there like, man, what does this have to do with personal finance? Let me tell you what it has to do with personal finance. Break it down. Let me break it down for you. The reason we do this show is for this. Here's your evolution. And I'm going to start off with the basic, right? If you don't know the five components that go into a credit score, right? And I've, I've had this show multiple times. If you don't know the five components of a credit score, payment history, right? Utilization, 
age, meaning how long have you had credit established, new credit, and credit mix. If you don't know those five things, and if you don't know the percentages, 35%, 30%, 15%, 10%, if you, if you can't move those components around in your mind, how, so the question becomes then, how can you improve your credit score? How? How? Just, you can call into the show, 678-381-1973. If you know how you can do it, if you know how you can do it without knowing the five components of a credit score, yeah. then call in. So that's evolution. So the evolution is what? Learn. Learn the five components first, because if you say, I don't know, it's no question that you can ask right now without taking this, this computer out that some people call a phone, and we could be so lazy about it, we could say, Siri, what's the five components of a credit score? And it'll pop it out for you, right? Mm -hmm. So from an evolution standpoint, if you say, my credit's not as strong as I want it to be, I want to improve it, okay. So I'm sitting there, I'm pausing, okay, do you know the five components of a credit score? So let me say it a different way. Let me say it a different way. Let me, let me say this to you. I used to say do re utro. Yeah. Right? I said do re utro before. Talk me that. I said do shikwa. I got a new one for you. What you got? Octon, listen to this. Octon gessel sha. Say that again. Octon gessel sha. Oct, call into the show if you know what that means. Listen to what I'm gonna say it slow for you. Octon Gessel Shaft. Octon Gessel Shaft. If you don't know what that means, that German, eh? it's German, but what does it mean? It, see, my German is getting good. So I just hit you I with some it. Russian. Yeah. I hit you with some German. Octon. Yeah. Gessel Shaft. You can't even Google it. You could Google it. But the, the thing is this if you don't know, then you gotta evolve. Study. Study, find out what the five components are. Because some people got strong credit scores already, right? But what I teach on the show is mm -hmm. this: it's not when you have a strong credit score. But here, here's the thing: what do you do? You know what to do when you when you get hit with something that brings your credit score down, mm. right? Huh? Right. Do you know how to come back when you when when your credit score go from seven fifty, seven fifty five, you violin, you doing your thing. And then stuff get a little tight. Uh oh. Stuff you miss a little boop. Payment here. Boop. Payment there. You got oh you are oh, you applying for this different stuff. Oh you ready to get a car house. This, that, and other. When your credit drop back down to like, you know, five fifty five, mm. five seventy five, mm. you going through some troubles, this that mm. do you know Get a candy bar. Do you know the five components of a credit score? What percentage is impacted? What percentage of those components impact your credit score? And how to maneuver and manipulate all five of them to get your score to go back up? See, it's fine to be on top. Fine is fine. 700 plus, 750, this, that, and the other. The hard part is. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody think they can beat me until they get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. Everybody think they can beat a winner until they get punched in the face. Because when you get punched in the face, that's when you say, oh, man, whoa, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know, right? So that's a new one for you. Dosha Kwa, Dover and Uthro, and now we got Octon Gesselshack. Octon Gesselshack. Now, I studied that for a presentation this week, so I'm not even going to tell you what that is, but if I know and you don't know, then figure out from an evolution standpoint who's who's going to be better prepared to deal with the ups and downs of life. So, that's evolution. Take where you are. Don't think about how you were five years ago, ten years ago, you used to be this. Start speaking into your life. I am good at managing my credit. I am good at saving. Not I don't know. I never, I never had no money to say. Okay. So what the universe said, you right. I, I can't do, you right. I can't imagine. Now I wore my all-star hat today because like one of those sayings I was just saying, which was some people dream about it, 
Some people be about it. Yeah. Some people dream about it. Some people be about it, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is you can you can have and do that same stuff too. The All Star Game is right up the the, the Super Bowl was here two weeks ago. Yeah. The All Star NBA All Star Game is in Charlotte. That's nowhere from here. But how many people have ever experienced that type of event? How many people you've seen it on TV? You've seen the game. How many people can say, I've been to the game and I've been to the All-Star Saturday night? Now, I, I mean, I went. I was at the top of the arena. This is evolution. I was at the top of the I brought tickets in the third level of the arena, right? Mm -hmm. And when I got in the arena, I said, man, I don't want to be up here. I want to be down there. Mm -hmm. I want to be down there with Kevin Harden. Yeah. Oh, that go Beyonce. Oh, man, that go Jay Z. I want to be down there. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. But the other, the other thing popped in my mind was this: when I looked around that arena, right? The the next thing that popped in my mind was this: how many people wish? How many people wish they were in the arena mm -hmm. to see this event live? Yep. Yeah. How many people? They're still outside the arena. Mm -hmm. They ain't even out, no. They not even outside the arena. They not even in New Orleans. So even though I was at the on the third level, it's levels to this. I was on the third level, but the next time I go, you best believe. Come on. You best believe the next time I go to All Star Game, I will not be on the third level. Mm -hmm. I'm going to evolve. It might be level two, depending on you know how I'm feeling, how things going in in my life. Might be level one, cause sometimes you gotta to level up. Oh yeah, courtside, bro. Might be courtside. Cause sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta just, you, you gotta bet on you. Mm -hmm. So if the courtside ticket five grand, ten grand, you say, oh my god, that's too much. Right. But for the experience, sometimes, cause when it's over, it's over. Mm -hmm. Nobody ain't gonna be saying, man, you did you go? You ever been to all star game? Mm -mm. Super Bowl, uh uh. Grammys, uh uh. What do you mean? Like what? What you do for fifty two years? It's like what you? So that's evolution. I want that to just marinate with you. So when you start talking about personal finance, everything has to evolve. Let your game. You can't dump like you used to dump when you was younger. You got to get a jumper. You got to develop a jumper and then develop a new skill. Guess what you got to do? Practice. 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 Like Alan Robinson said. Practice. But you gotta practice because the other thing, the, the, the part that doesn't get publicized, that Alvin, Alan Robinson came back and said was this. I didn't become an all-star. He said, I didn't become an all-star in the NBA until I started listening to what Larry Brown was telling me to do and how to be an all-star. Mm -hmm. The old Alan Robinson was like, practice? Man, I, I don't need to practice. I'm the lead scorer in the league. I'm this. Larry Brown was telling him what to do, how to do it. He fought Larry Brown tooth and nail. But when he got to the Hall of Fame, if you go and look, Google Allen Iverson's acceptance speech in the NBA Hall of Fame and see who was sitting up on the stage. Larry Brown, Dr. J, okay? That's, that, and John Thompson. Larry Brown, no, these were the key people in his life that got him to the NBA Hall of Fame. Larry Brown, who told him in the NBA how to do it, Dr. J, the biggest icon in Philadelphia and the NBA, and John Thompson. That was it. But his game had to evolve. Yeah. So we got to do the same thing. So that's evolution. You know, I spent a lot of time on that, but uh, well worth it because uh, I can stay on that all night. The other thing that I want to hit on tonight, and this is a big one, on. value. Ooh. If you're not... I always have a pen. Every time I'm on this show, I have a pen. Value. I want you to sit down right now and just think about this. How valuable are you to the universe? Mm. Value. What value do you bring? So let me, let me explain value to you, right? If you have the skill set to do brain surgery, mm -hmm. right? If you are a neurosurgeon, mean, meaning that you operate on people that have brain 
conditions, brain issues. You operate on their brain. You're a neurosurgeon. Guess what? You get paid and compensated a certain level of money. Because in the world, in the universe, it's not, it's only a certain number of people that have that skill set. Right? You could be a doctor. You could be a doctor. But you may not have the skill set to be a brain surgeon. So when you start thinking about value, you have to look at what skill set do you possess? What need can you feel? What problems can you solve that make you valuable? Mm -hmm. Right? People looking at, I looked at the Grammys. I'm a huge music person. Cardi B, she's winning all these. Nipsey Hussle got nominated. Childish Gambino won Best Rep. But what value does I mean, what value does Donald Glover bring to the entertainment industry? He already won a Golden Globe for doing a show, which is Atlanta. He'd already had another album, and then he came out with this one, and then he won three Grammys. What value? So once he wins a Grammy, guess what? His value just went up. Woo. Yeah, out the roof. Because guess what? His title now is Grammy Award winning. Mm. Musician, right? Even if you say Grammy nominated, whoop, your value went up. Now to bring it down to working, like we working day and night, right? We working on our, you know, nine to five. We working in our entrepreneurial skills. We working in our small business. Guess what? If you take the time to develop a certain skill. If you develop that skill to the point where it's not too many people can do or produce what you can produce, you will become more valuable. So you don't have to, if you're working at a job, you don't have to look for, oh man, they need to give me a raise. No, you know what you need to do? You need to find something that nobody else is willing to do Come on. in your space. Now listen, notice what I said, willing to do. They could do it. But they say, you know what, I'm not going to be reading that book over the weekend. I'm not going to be reading them job aids over the weekend. If you take the time to get better at what you do than everybody else around you, guess what? You don't have to say nothing. Your work will speak so loud for you that they'll say, my good. Well, what about, oh, I know, that's the A, B, C, and the D. But you got to do the D before the G. That's the only way to work. And you go back to work, they say, my, my good. God dang, how she know how to do that? Where'd she get that from? So what you have to do is, from a bad, and here's the other thing about value. This is this is the bigger, this is the bigger point I want to make tonight about value. You are only as valuable as you allow other people to see you. Mm. Now let that marinate a little bit. Because somebody could come to you and say, oh, can you do this for me? Oh, and you say, yeah, I can do that for you. And they say, well, how much is it going to cost? Thousand? You could say, it's going to cost you a thousand dollars. Oh. I thought you could do it for a hundred. I could do it myself. Oh, really? Okay. That's fine. But if you want me to do it, it's a thousand dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Right? That's if you want me to do it. Well, I can do it myself. Do it. But let me tell you about people who say they can do it themselves. The data does not lie. People say they don't need a personal trainer, right? I do. Who don't know how to work out? Right? People say they don't know. I know how to work out. Okay. Well, why, why in this country is 80% of the people fat. obese? Fat. Sick fat. Okay. Fat. So, Right? So, if everybody knew how to do it, why are they doing it? Mm -hmm. You need a personal trainer. You, you need a personal trainer. So, now nah, let's get off that. Get off of that. Get off of them people. Maybe they just, okay. You know how to do it, right? So, let me, let me throw some more data at you. People always tell me, like, man, you do that show, this, that, and that, that, that. I know how to fix my credit. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. answer me this. Why? Why? 
is it estimated that 70 to 80 percent, no, I'm lying, 70 to almost 80 million people, it's only 300 million people in the U.S., mm -hmm. 70 to 80 million people have low to no credit. Mm. Do you think if they knew how to do it themselves, they would do it? They don't know. The data, data does not lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, why on average people that are 65 years old and retirement age, right, over 75% to 80% of the 70, 65 year old and above in this country have less than $60,000 in retirement savings. But you know how to do it yourself. No, you, you, you don't. It goes back to your value. If you allow somebody to take your skill, your craft, your experience, your knowledge and say, you know what, I'll give you $100 for that. Mm. When you know you you feel like you worth a thousand, but you don't want to hold out for a thousand, value yourself. You determine the value. It's just like stock, right? You your own stock company. So if somebody come to you and you say it's a thousand, they walk away. Guess what? It's still a thousand. Mm -hmm. It's still a thousand because you don't need ten of them. You need one to give you a thousand. And you guess what? For that thousand, guess what you do? Your best work. It's on time, it's tight, it looks good, you gave a good performance, you gave a good speech, you gave a good record, you gave a good book, you gave a good show. You gave them what you gave them more than they expected. Yeah. It was worth it. That's where the value comes in at. So that's why they pay Beyonce, Jay-Z, all these other, because guess what? They put in the time, not just for the concert, they practice. They got a voice coach. They invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. They eat right. They exercise. All of that goes into their value. Yeah. They memorize. And guess what? Nobody has to tell them to do it. They do it on their own yeah. with no overseer. Investing in themselves. Right? Investing in themselves. Your value. So the next time somebody says, oh, man, I thought you could just do it. I, I can't. I want to, but them days are free. Like we used to say when me and my wife had our business. You should have called us last year. You would have got it free. Mm -hmm. This year, we charging this year. It ain't nothing free no more. So if we doing business together, I'm going to pay for your services. And if you ask me to do something for you, know that I'm going to be asking you for compensation. some compensation. Yep. They don't always have to be in money. It could be advertising. It could be, hey, I'm going to put you, you know, you're going to be on the cover. You're going to be in the insert. You're going to be, okay. I, it's marketing dollars. Oh, I'm gonna get my photographer. To, okay, it's gonna be, some, it, but it's gonna be compensation exchanged between two businesses because, as a people, we have to get comfortable with saying we're not gonna be doing business with each other for free. Because if I'm doing business with you, you ain't charging me. I ain't charging you. How are we gonna make money? Where's the value in that? It ain't no value in that. Because you ain't charging me and I ain't charging you. Where the chicken sandwich coming from? What, what a value. What we got to get used to is say, hey, man, it's a 1000 I'll give you a 1000 The only thing I'm asking from you, give me your best work. Give me your best work for $1,000. And that's it. That, that's value. And you say, what does that have to do with personal finance? Everything. Everything. Because when you start making a 1000 2000 3000 for your work, your time away from your family, them late nights, them early mornings. When you start making 1000 per project, 10000 per project, a million per project, that's different than making zero because mm -hmm. we want to be down with each other. Forget being down with each other. Sure. We can love each other. We can be friends with each other. Forget being down with each other. Forget up. that. The hook up. It ain't no more hookup. Oh, that's gone. We, we doing business with each other. Tell me what your price is and stop haggling with people about their price because if they say it's $1,000, it's $1,000. So either you can you can get it or you can't get it. That's value. So you got you to gotta start thinking about, you know, value. The last point I want to I share with you all tonight 
two great points, evolution and talking about value. How do we value each other? No, I'm good, man. I can't, I can't do that. Um, the last point I want to make, and this, this is probably the most critical of all the topics tonight. Episode 90. Episode 90. And uh, we only got 10, 10 more shows to go, and we're going to be at 100. How many people in the podcast world can say that? I got 100, I got 100 episodes in the can. But here's the last topic. The last topic is this. In order for you to grow and evolve and create value, you have to become more vulnerable. You, you have to become more vulnerable. What do I mean by that? In order for you to grow, you have to, you have to get out of your shell of being guarded because you don't want somebody to know that you don't know what you're doing, or you don't want them to know that you don't know where you're going, or you don't want them to know that you don't know how much it costs, because you don't want them to know that you don't know the answer to the question while you're sitting at the table in the meeting, because you feel like you should know, and if I say something, they don't know that I don't know what I should know. But here's the thing, when you become vulnerable, when you become vulnerable and let people know, I don't know, what's the answer? Can you tell me? Can you show me? Right? When you become vulnerable, guess what you do? You grow, you grow and you evolve not only in your personal self, but in your business. In your business, right? I'm gonna give you a very quick example of what I'm talking about that you've seen and everybody can test, everybody remembers this. So I'm gonna give it to you, I'm gonna give you the short version. Steve Harvey's career was already on a, on a trajectory where he was doing a little bit of everything. Morning show, family feud, you know, hosting these different specials, on this, on that. When he made that mistake on Miss America, when he, or Miss, Miss Universe, Miss America, Miss Universe, wh whichever you remember, that show, when he said Miss Columbia, mm -hmm. when he did that, that night that that happened, the following day, the days that followed that, the weeks that followed that, the months that followed that, all the way up to a year later, all of that backlash that he got, right? He this, he that, he can't read, he this, I told y'all. All the ridicule, all the jokes, all of the this, all of that. Guess what? He learned something. He learned a valuable lesson. And guess what happened? If you go back and you trace his career, from that point, what happened after that? He didn't go incremental. He went exponential. His career got exponentially higher after that because he got to the point where he could joke about it. Not only could he joke about it, but the next year in the Super Bowl, where people were spending millions of dollars for a 30-second commercial, guess what? T-Mobile did a commercial with Steve Harvey doing a spoof on making a joke of that mistake that he made. But he made himself vulnerable. Why? Steve Harvey wasn't always a great host. He was a comedian. Mm -hmm. But he developed a skill at being a host. He just host. I, I mean, he just he hosted the ESPYs. He's he's hosted all kinds of shows. He just hosted the NFL awards at the Super yep. Bowl. Yep. He gets paid to be a host now. He he's not just a comedian. He evolved. There's a whole lot of comedians with Steve Harvey. They didn't develop into, into host. He took the time to develop a skill and create it, and he knew his value in the marketplace, but he made himself more valuable by why? How? Being vulnerable. Telling people, I don't know. I'm going to get out in front of all these people, and I might make a mistake, and they might laugh at me. 
And they might tell some joke. And they might get on social media. But guess what? All of those people that joked about him, all those people that was taking the time, I'm going to tweet, ah, <laughs> Steve Harvey, I don't know. Guess what? Steve Harvey turned around and was cashing checks from being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Just standing up and saying, hey, um, uh, coach, I forgot to play. Uh, I, I know it's the Super Bowl. Run that by me again. And everybody looking at you like, bro, we done been over this a thousand times. What you? I know, but right now, I got all this stuff going on in my head. Should I be running a, a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine on this route? Vulnerable. Or you can sit there and be like, fake like you know the play. And then Brady come to you, and you out of position. And they like, where were you at? And you like... Oh, I thought it was a no, bro. It's a five. Why are you running a three? Mm -hmm. You know the route tree. I said it's a five. It's always been a five. Vulnerable. Make yourself vulnerable. I didn't say you have to be a fool, but if you become vulnerable, guess what you do? You can grow. You. That's the only way for you to grow. You can grow. You can grow so big that like. Man, and guess what? As you grow and you do this multiple times, guess what? You become less and less afraid of letting people know, I don't know. And I'm cool with you knowing that I don't know. I, I don't know. I know a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I may know where to go get it from, but I don't know. Just off the top of the head, I, I don't know. But guess what? When you get through that and you do learn, when you find out the answer, guess what? Now you know. Now you really know. Because now you know, because you, you know now, and you know, and you want to make sure that nobody else will ever come to you and say, you don't know. So now you really know. You ain't going to forget that. You, those, are, those are lessons that you don't forget. So you got to be vulnerable. You have to evolve. And you have to create your value. So with that being said, tonight is episode 90. Got to do the book of the week. We got some, oh, we got some bangers, and they and they right on time. I always try to pill, I always try to put some books out for the book of the week that aligns to the topics that I've just, that I've spoken about during that episode. So episode ninety, I'm gonna hit y'all with with this book. This book is so powerful. If you don't have it, go to Amazon tonight and get it. I promise you, this book is deep. The title of the, this first book for the book of the week this week, the title of this book is called The Tipping Point. The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference by Malcolm Gladwell. Now, I'm a, again, I've already read this book, right? And the way you can tell I read it is because people that know me know I, I mark up books. Look, so you can see why I'm taking notes. But one of the key rules of this book is this. No matter what your craft is, no matter what you're working on, in order for you to become proficient at it, you have to have done it. Listen to this number. 10,000 hours. Mm. 10,000 hours before you, can, before you can even say, I'm the expert. 10, he didn't say getting paid 10,000 hours. You have to do it, whatever that task is, for 10,000 hours. And he gives example after example. And what he says in the book is this. You can do it fast or you can do it slow. Meaning what? And some people, they're working on their craft every day, all day, every day. Case in point, some of these entertainers, they say what? I stay in the studio. I wake up in the studio. I do a track. I do a verse. I go to sleep at the studio. I eat at the studio. I smoke at the studio. I, 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 I do everything at the studio. Okay? So if you're doing those type of hours, if you're putting in that type of time, you're going to hit 10,000 hours a lot quicker than somebody that says, I'm an entertainer and... Uh, I go to the studio on 
Wednesday, and I go back on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Think about how much, even if you stay for 24 hours on Wednesday and Saturday, think about how long it's going to take you to get to 10,000 hours. And this man is, I'm talking about he's done research, kids and youth leagues, people that are in martial arts, scientists, Bill Gates, people that are in the finance, 10,000 hours in that space before you become an expert. It's called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. If you don't have a copy, get a copy. The other book, which I think is also right on time with what we're talking about tonight, we talked about what? Evolution. We talked about value, right? So those two things, just those two alone, and then we talked about being vulnerable. This book is called The Automatic Millionaire by David Bach. Now, again, I, got, I always have to show that so that way people be like, man, you ain't got all the money. I read the book. I put it in play too. What this book talks to you about, The Automatic Millionaire by David Bach, what this book talks about is to the people that don't have the discipline to follow through and take action, right? Some people dream about it. Some people be about it. They don't have the drive to take the action. So what you have to do is you have to set up your financial world in such a way that it's automatic. It's automatic. You need to be saving 10%. You set up an account. You put it into your online banking system. You put it into when you get your payroll check. Or if you're an entrepreneur, you put it into your bank and you say, hey, every month 10% goes into that account and that's it. Period. It ain't no, I'm going to get it. It's automatic. You have a mortgage, you have rent, you say, okay, this money I'm going to allocate to my rent, to my mortgage automatically. Okay, because you know you're going to need a place to stay. What about, oh, I got a, I got a utility. You know the utility bill. They come every month, it's pretty much the same amount every month. You can set it up. You can set it up and put it on automatic. That's what I do. All of it is automatic. All of it is, because what that does, it forces you to be disciplined. Because if you don't, if you go messing with it, and them checks start got their <laughs> stuff bouncing, like you be like, boy, man. So it takes, a, it, that's evolution. Now, the closing thought is this. It's going to take you time to get to the point that you can do that. Because I wasn't always able to do that. Because a lot of times I used to be juggling. Oh, I got to do this. I got to take from this. Do that. But then you get to a certain point where you create a certain, you, you create a certain amount of value for who you are and what you do. Right? You get to the point where you understand that it's imperative that you become vulnerable in order for you to grow. Grow your mind so that way you can evolve. All of those those three things go together. It's like, I mean, it's like a Rubik's Cube, right? They all three go together. Evolution, value, and becoming vulnerable. You do that over the next 30 days and see where you end up. The next 12 months. So once you get to the point where you can become an automatic millionaire, they just put money away, right? Back in the day, we used to call it do dollar cost averaging. It didn't matter how much the stock was, high, low, I'm buying $100 worth every two weeks. I'm buying $100 worth every two weeks. It could be high, it could be low. If it's low, I'm buying more shares. If it's high, I'm buying less. But I'm buying every two weeks. I am buying some stock every two weeks. It don't matter what the price is. Automatic millionaire. So, another great show. Uh, next week, mm -hmm. we're going to have a powerful sister on next week. She's coming on to the show, and um, I'm not going to give it away, but just I'm going to just give you what they call a teaser reel. This young lady has danced. She's a professional dancer. She has danced with some of the largest entertainers in the world, i.e. Beyonce, Jay-Z, Ludacris, uh, Usher, me, Neo, and on and on and on. And she's going to be right here. Well, my bag is sitting next week right here mm. on this show. So make sure that you tune in. Make sure you tell somebody to tune in. 
the best show on social media anywhere, the Daily Bread Radio Show. Episode next week, we count down next week, episode 91. So we're going to go 10, 9, 8, all the way when we get to 100, boom, 100. And Come you'll on. be able to say, I witnessed it, I seen it. And guess what? It's not like being documented. So when people say, nah, you ain't do that. I could go back and say, you know what? Google. <laughs> Google, Google the Daily Bread Radio show and see what you come up with. Google it and see if you don't come up with 90 episodes. Uh, then it, some people dream about it. Some people be about it. So be about it. That's what we are about on the Daily Bread Radio show. Y'all have a great week. Have a great weekend. If you can do it, go to Charlotte. Experience, have an experience you never experienced before. Go and hang out and be around the NBA All-Star Game. And if you can't, that's fine, too. Guess what? Do it next year. Put it on your list. Not your bucket list. Put it on your things-to-do list. Your things-to-do list. So, what do we have? Okay, February 23rd, 6 to 9 p.m., we got Love and Laughter. A night of clean comedy is going to be at New Jerusalem Church, New Jerusalem Baptist Church, 42, no, 4, 22 East Krogan Street, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Saturday, February 23rd, 6 to 9 p.m. Clean, listen to what I'm saying, clean, fun, laughter, love and laughter. We got some of the biggest entertainers in the industry. We got Big Daddy, laugh a lot. He's going to be the headliner. We got light-skinned Bobby Brown is going to be on the show. And then we got none other than six. Five is going to be on the show. So make sure y'all go and buy your tickets. Get your tickets at DKM Radio. Go to the calendar page. DK Radio. DKM Radio. DKM Radio. Go to the calendar page. Go to the calendar page. And get your tickets. And get your tickets. Take some action. Get your tickets and support a worthy cause. Love and laughter. Something clean. Something enlightening. Hey, I'll be there. Me and my wife, we, hey, we'll be right there. And you never know. You never know. I, I might do a little comedy. Uh -oh. I might do some comedy. Watch you know what I'm saying? I got some jokes. I got some jokes. <laughs> why? Why did the astronaut? Why did the astronaut leave his wife? Why? Cause he needed some space. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all, have a good. Hey, love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hey, couldn't do it without you. Love you from the top to the bottom. But make sure you take some action now. Make sure you take... Hey! Hey!